Now, you might already be familiar with one-dimensional arrays, which are variables that store a list of individual values. So for example, we might have a one-dimensional array that stores a list of strings, in this case, names of different grocery stores. So two-dimensional variables are different in that they store other arrays instead of just individual values in their list. So you could kind of think of it like a list that stores sublists inside of it. If we go off of this grocery store name example, a two-dimensional version of that array might include a list of the individual items we may want to buy from that store. 2D arrays are really useful for storing and retrieving things like a location on a screen. They're also really good for storing pixel image color values. In general, you'll want to use a 2D array anytime it makes sense for multiple pieces of information to be linked or grouped together inside of one variable. Let's jump into P5 and get on with some examples here. So I've got a blank sketch here. The first thing we'll look at is how to declare a two-dimensional array. And we're gonna start this pretty much the same exact way as declaring a one-dimensional array. So I'm going to start with the keyword let, and then I'll give my two-dimensional array variable a name. I'm gonna call this point ARR, short for point array, because I'm gonna use this to store a list of points. And for now, I'll just initialize this as an empty array. The next step I need to do is to initialize or populate my array with different values. So there are a lot of approaches we could take here. Uh, I'll show you two different variations. Now that we've declared our array and initialized it as an empty array, I can access any of the individual elements just by typing out the name and then giving the array index that I'd like to set inside of square brackets. So here I need to assign a value. Now, if we were working with just a one dimensional array, I might say something like that first element equals zero or that first element equals a string, and I'd be done. In this case though, I'd like to store an array inside of this element of my main two-dimensional array. Uh, so I could do that two different ways. I could write my left and right square brackets, and then inside of that, store a list of values, something like that. I could also use the new array object constructor, and then type my list of values separated by commas. At this point, not a huge difference in terms of which approach you make to populating your new array. Now, I'd like a few additional points inside of this array, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. If I were coding this myself, and I noticed this much repetition in my code, I'd probably realize that that's an opportunity to use a loop, and we'll cover that in another video. And again, I'm imagining these as points on my canvas and I'm imagining each of my subarray values as the horizontal and vertical locations on that canvas. So we've got this all set up uh, with some information and to get a look at what is actually being stored inside of our array, I'm gonna use an array method called join. And join simply takes the values that are in an array, converts them to text so that we can print them out on screen or into our console. And we have the option with the join function of putting in a separator between the values that we'll ask it to spit out. So I'd like to separate this with a new line character. Uh, that way I'll get each pair of values on a separate line in the console. And I'll wrap that whole statement in a print function. Now when I hit play, I can see down on my console, I've got all of my information that's stored in that array. So we've got a two dimensional array. Our next step is to figure out how do we access the elements in that array. So let's say for example, I'd like to use some of that array information to draw an ellipse on the screen. So I know that uh, the location data that I've saved in each of these two dimensional arrays is inside of the point array variable. So we start this off just as if we were accessing a one dimensional array where I type the variable name of my array and then the index that I'm interested in. So right now, this point array index three is referencing the entirety of this two element array that we've saved into it on line nine. And what I want is actually the individual values that are inside that array. So we actually need a second set of brackets here. And it's this two index notation that lets us pull out individual values. So this is saying to P5, hey, go into that point array variable, look for the third index inside of that array that's stored in the third index, get the zero element. So that's the first element in there. So that's gonna be one point, and for my other point that I'm using to set this ellipse, I'll get the index number one, and then we'll just give this a size. 
Now we can also use that same notation to write the array, so to save new values to the array. And maybe I'd like to do something like bring in some mouse interaction. And maybe I'd like to, when I click the mouse, uh, have that location move across the screen. So I'll, again, just copy paste that same double index notation. And I can use an equals operator to just add 10 to that every time I click the mouse. So now when I come here and click, 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 every time I'm clicking, I'm diving into that two-dimensional array variable, looking for the third element, which is this array. And to the first element in that array, I'm taking its value and adding 10 to it. Okay, uh, so that's just a quick intro to using two-dimensional arrays in P5JS.